through my work working with people and studying sea turtles and trying to solve questions about making sure turtles are around, uh, I've been aware that the thing that has to happen is that people need to connect with these animals on some level. Uh, if turtles are going to make it, they need a whole bunch of you know, turtle huggers to be on their side. It's not just going to happen through, you know, some some pulling of some economic strings and, and some incentives. It's got to have a uh, an emotional component. Um, there's got to be this crazy group of turtle lovers. You know, and, and it's not just about turtles, you know, whatever it is, whether it's sharks or whales or mountains or forests, rivers and lakes. You need a group of people who are just off the hook in love with that system with those animals with that water otherwise you, you just can't jump start the movement and so that that idea like how do you where do those people come from how are they made how are they raised how do we do more of that uh, how do we make sure that we've got turtle lovers and whale lovers and shark lovers and mountain lovers and river lovers being raised and and encouraged so that we have that that group to get things started and, and to fuel it. Because there isn't, there isn't enough money in, in the world to fix everything that's broken. We, we can't do it. We're never going to have the budget to do it. But I think there's enough passion to do it. And so how do we, how do, we do that? So as a scientist, I'm, I'm curious about the science of passion, the science of awe, uh, the science of persistence. What, what makes somebody not give up? What makes somebody hold on to that courage? And when everybody around them is saying, don't do that, that's a bad idea, that's dangerous, they still keep going, they still push through. Um, where does that come from? When I first proposed saving sea turtles in Baja, my advisor said it was too late, it was a bad idea, it was impossible, and it was crazy. But we built a team, we pulled people together who were like-minded and maybe just as crazy as each other, and we kept at it. And 20 years later, we've got a, a successful story to tell. And I look back on this and I say, what, what was it that kept us going? Why didn't we give up when we very easily could have? And when everybody was suggesting that we should give up. And it, it was our camaraderie, it was love for each other it was love for this place and these animals and, and, and it's on a certain level of commitment and a recognition that if we don't do this, nobody will. And maybe most people in the world won't even know that it didn't happen, but we would. And whatever that, that essence is that makes you get up in the morning and, and keep fighting, uh, we need more of that in the world. We need to spread it around. We need to teach it and share it and grow it. And that's a fascinating conversation and an important one. So what, you know, what's clear is that humans are at their best outside, in motion, solving problems together. That's what we do well. That's what we've done for most of our history. That, if we did that well, we survived and we thrived and we expanded. Outside, in motion, solving problems together. Turns out our you know, modern society is kind of the opposite of that. We're inside, not moving very much, uh, not solving very many problems, and working alone a lot. And our institutions, our schools, our businesses, our cubicles, our workstations are kind of the opposite of what our brains are best at. So if you take a group of kids and you get outside, and you start moving around and you connect with a forest or an ocean or you're on a turtle beach and you go for a walk and you look for mama turtles laying their eggs and, and you look for hatchlings and you get them down to the ocean. That's brains at their best. Those kids are, are in their element. They're, they're looking for turtles, they're solving problems, they're outside, they're in motion. They've got oxygen going to their brain. They've got the open sky above them and the beach below them, and the, the ocean to one side, the forest to the other side. And that's, you know, that's, that's living. Uh, we need more of that. And, you know, E.O. Wilson called it biophilia. 
it's, it's who we are. We are biological. We are uh, these amazing animals. And when we're able to plug back in to the environment and be ourselves and expand into that and solve problems together outside in motion, that that's, makes people happy. It makes people fulfilled. And, and I see that every, every time I'm with a group.